Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. We are so excited that you are tuning in today for this Flipgrid Live event. My name is Ann Cosma, and I work on Team Flipgrid, and I'm just so excited to have you join today. Today, we're so excited to welcome Marissa and Mia of Infinite Dance Flow. But before we get started, let me tell you just a little bit about Flipgrid. We are a free video communication discussion platform from Microsoft, and we are on a mission to empower every person on the planet to share their voice and respect the diverse voices of others. And that's why we are so excited about today's event. Infinite Dance Flow is a dance company in Los Angeles, California in the United States, and it's made up of dancers with and without disabilities. Infinite Dance Flow is on a mission to prove that dancing is truly for everyone. So without further ado, here's Marissa. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at. It looks like we have we have uh, we have some friends from Alberta, Canada, Canada, Hancock, Maine. Uh, Ontario, Canada, wow. Florida, Greece, Malaysia, Rocky View, Bloomington, California, Tacoma, Washington, Los Angeles, India. Oh my gosh. We have many, many friends from all over the world. This is absolutely wonderful. So as um, Anne, Anne had introduced me, uh, my name is Marissa Hamamoto and I'm the founder of Infinite Flow. And today we have a really, really, really exciting session with you all. So what we're gonna do is uh, we are gonna show you a few videos. We're gonna have a conversation. We're gonna even have you guys dance, have everyone dance because the theme today is everyone can dance. So without me talking even more, uh, our work is a little bit easier seen than talked about. So Chris, let me have you play our sizzle reel. I hope you liked that video. So I want to know in the chat box, what are some words that describe our dancing? And what do you think our message is? So let us know in the chat box. In the meantime, I want to introduce to you my friend and one of my company dancers in my dance company, uh, Mia Shaikowitz. And Mia, let me have you introduce yourself. Go ahead. Hello, everybody. I'm Mia, and as you can see, I'm in a wheelchair. Woo! Now, a lot of people may think that because I'm in a wheelchair, I can't dance, or maybe I can't do other things. But I learned after I got paralyzed when I was 15 years old that I could still do anything I wanted to do, maybe a little differently, but there's always a way. So if you want to dance and you think that you can't, Flip that around because we're going to show you that you can. Awesome. All right. And I'm going to send it back to Marissa. We're going to talk a little bit more about dance and inclusion. 
Thank you so much, Mia. And yes, everyone can dance and don't go away because we're, I, we're actually going to be teaching you a little bit of dancing in just a little bit. So, uh, so one of the things that Infinite Flow does is we go to schools like yours and perform. But because of the pandemic, we had to stop. And it was really sad that we had to stop going to schools and performing because we really loved going to schools. But guess what we did? We, we decided to take our in-person school assembly program and turn it into a virtual virtual assembly and we turned it we we created a short film called scoops of inclusion and scoops of inclusion this is a really special short film in which we are making we are we are using many many accessibility features so that this film is accessible for many people so what do i mean by accessibility let's just watch a little bit of the very beginning of the short film scoops of inclusion go ahead chris the characters in this video use their real names and identities that are authentic to themselves. All cast members were already part of Infinite Flow's company prior to creating Scoops of Inclusion. This is just the beginning of a larger conversation on diversity, equity, and inclusion. A series of people dance to the beat. An ice cream cone appears. They stretch out their arms. Scoops of Inclusion by Infinite Flow Dance! Story by Marissa Hamamoto, produced by Infinite Flow Dance. A woman in red overalls appears. Hello, friends. I'm Marissa. Welcome to the School of Us. A man appears. Hi, my name is Shaheen. I'm deaf. I communicate using ASL or American Sign Language. Another woman appears. Hello, I am Angela, and I am the Sign Language Interpreter. During the show, you'll see me. She points to the corner. Over here with my team interpreter, Rosa. Rosa waves. She came appears. You see the one at the bottom of your screen, also called Hamilton. Hamilton just don't help deaf people. Can also be useful if you need to turn down your sound on your computer or in device. A girl appears. Hi, I'm Dee Dee. I'm the audio describer. I'll be off screen, but you'll hear my voice giving descriptions of the scenes throughout this video. A woman appears. Hi, I'm Natalie, and I'm blind. And audio descriptions like the one Dee Dee will do in this video will help people like me who can't see. Marissa appears. Now, on with the show. All right, so we learned a little bit about accessibility. So if you, you know, imagine if you can't hear or if you can't see, how will you watch a film? So we added captions and sign language for, for, for those who can't hear and for those who can't see, we added audio description. And that's why you heard Dee Dee's voice describing, describing what is happening in the film. So I want to know from Mia. Mia, you use a wheelchair. So what are some accessibility accommodations that you need? Well, for me, being a wheelchair user, I don't need steps. <laughs> when I go to a building, the easiest way for me to go into a building is a ramp. Now, a ramp isn't just easy for me. There are other people that would love to have ramps as well. Think about mothers that have a stroller. It's easier for them to get into an access of a building with a ramp. Also, if you have any type of mobility device, it doesn't have to be a wheelchair, maybe a scooter, maybe you have crutches. Those are all things that help people to get in. Ramps are universal for everyone. Back to you. Yes. And what I want to add to that is that, you know, we all actually need accommodations, even, you know, even if you don't think it's an accommodation because we are all different. You know, some of us, some of us, for example, I'm a very slow reader. And so for me, I prefer to read books through listening to audiobooks because I'm a slow reader. And that, that to me, you know, that might not be the typical accessibility accommodations that we see in this film, but that's also an accommodation. So accommodations actually make all of our lives actually better. So let's watch a short scene from Scoops of Inclusion. And because Mia is with us today, this is Mia's art class. So go ahead, Chris. Everyone appears in an art classroom with a woman in a wheelchair. Hey Mia, we have some new students we would like you to meet. Hi, my name is Mia and my pronouns are she and her. <laughs> I love your picture. I'm Henry, my pronouns are he and him. 
and I'm Scarlett. My pronouns are she and her. I love your picture. Thanks. It's called a self-portrait, and you'll be able to make one in art class. I love art. Me too. I also love singing and dancing. I love dancing too. When I was younger, I never saw anyone like me dancing in a wheelchair. So now I want to dance to show others that they can dance too. Scarlett, would you like to dance with me? Absolutely! Scarlett and Mia wheel in circles around each other. They raise their arms and bow. always had a disability? Not always. When I was 15 years old, a blood vessel ruptured in my spinal cord, and a few hours later, I lost my ability to walk. I was really nervous to go back to school in a wheelchair. But my friends saw me, and they said, whether I'm seated or standing, I'm still the same person. Speaking of friends, I would encourage you two to make some new friends at school this year. Well, we've already made two great new friends, Kai and River. Well, I'd say we made two great new friends, too. I'm actually a little nervous to approach new people and make new friends. How can I do that here? Well, one way to make new friends is to find out what you have in common with each other. Let's play a small game. Henry, what are three things that make me and Kai different? Hmm. Mia uses a wheelchair. Kai doesn't. Kai has curly hair. Mia doesn't. And Kai has darker skin than Mia. That's right. These differences aren't good or bad. They're what make us equally unique. Scarlett, what are five things that make me and Kai similar? Five. Hmm. Number one, you're both great dancers. Number two, you both have nice smiles. Number three, hey Kai, do you like art? Yes. Number three, you both like art. Number four, you're both human beings. <laughs> and number five, hmm. Oh, I know. Mia, do you like ice cream? I love ice cream. Number five, you both love ice cream. Would you have thought that Kai and I, who look so different, have so much in common? That's why it's important not to judge anyone from what's on the outside. When you meet new friends, find out what you have in common with each other and celebrate the differences that you have. Hey, if you like ice cream, you should come to our ice cream extravaganza later. It's in the gym. See, it's accessible so we can all eat ice cream together. Mmm, that sounds fantastic. I'll be there. One thing though, I'm Jewish and I only eat kosher foods. Will the ice cream be kosher? It will be now. Solution to exclusion is scoop and inclusion. Awesome. I'll see you soon. Mia waves as everyone disappears. Mia and Frank wear Spanish clothing and dance in a room. Holding Mia's hand, Frank pulls and spins her to face him. They push each other away and lean back. Frank spins her. They raise one arm. They hold each other's hands. They spin each other in circles. They let go of each other's hands and back away from each other. They spin and move forward. Frank walks toward Mia and pushes her hand. They spin away from each other and turn back. Mia grabs Frank's hand. She wheels forward. Frank spins her. She steps one foot forward. Mia flicks her dress. Frank pushes her backward. She grabs his arm. Frank lowers Mia to the floor. Mia lays on the floor as Frank walks around her. He spins. He stands above her and lifts her. They spread out their arms. Mia turns away, then back. She grabs Frank's arm. He circles her around him, then spins her. Frank pulls Mia's arm behind her as she rolls forward. He pulls her back, stands above her, and dips her under him. Frank places his hand on Mia's neck as she spins. She falls back into his hand. He lifts his leg over her head. He lets go of her neck. She falls. He catches her head with his cap.
All right, I hope you like that video. This is one scene from Scoops of Inclusion and we're gonna get to some dancing and we keep on saying ice cream, but yes, this this is the ice cream wrap we'll be teaching, but let's, let me bring back Anne to uh, give some context as to Flipgrid. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Marissa and Mia. It was so awesome to see those clips and that section from Scoops of Inclusion. I absolutely love how this content that you're sharing just shows that dance does not discriminate. And it's so awesome to hear about the importance of accessible features like audio descriptions and captions. And Marissa, I know you've created some awesome content for Infinite Flow inside the Discovery Library. So all of these topics that you've created actually focus on accessibility and inclusion and the clips that you've been showing are all available inside your Flipgrid topics inside the Discovery Library. So we're going to show just how simple and easy and awesome it is to find and use your content. And you do have a specific topic called show us your ice cream wrap and we're going to be talking about that and coming back to ice cream in just a little bit. But friends, Remember, all of the clips that Marissa has showed are available inside these Flipgrid content, inside their topics. And my good friend Chris is going to share his screen, and I want to show you how simple it is to find Infinite Flows topics. So it's as simple as going to your web browser and typing in aka.ms slash inclusive dance. And this will take you right to Infinite Flow's Discovery Library page that has all of the awesome content that Marissa just told us about. So you'll see tons and tons of awesome ready to use topics, but we searched with the filter that isolates this specific topic today called Show Us Your Ice Cream Wrap. And Chris is going to click on that and what you see is information for students to use and reflect with. There's an incredible video that's been included and when you add this topic, your students will be able to watch that video. But if you notice that little blue button that says add topic, this is how you use it. And you can choose to use this topic individually or add it to your Flipgrid group. And think of your group as your classroom, right? As soon as you do that, you can edit as needed if you need to make the topic customized for your learning community. And remember, once you add this topic, you'll be able to view and use that awesome Infinite Flow video. It's a full instruction video teaching students this ice cream wrap dance. And I know our guests are going to come back and visit that and do a little teaching and we're going to do some dancing in just a moment. And as soon as you share this topic, the fun begins. This is when your students are able to use all of those creative elements inside the Flipgrid camera, add their response, reflect on their learning, and share their takeaways. So Marissa, Mia, I'm pretty sure you're actually gonna lead us in a dance activity and everybody out there is probably ready to learn alongside with you. So are you ready? Let's dance. All right, so. I, Mia and I are going to teach just a little bit about the little bit of the ice cream wrap. And as Anne just said, you can watch the whole instructional video on Flipgrid. Okay, so now I'm going to teach a little bit. Just follow me. And again, everyone can dance. And so if you're having a little bit of a hard time doing the moves exactly like me, it's okay. There's nothing. There's no wrong answers in dance. All right, ready? Okay, so just follow me, okay? And if, you, if you're having a hard time following me again, just, just have fun. So here we go. And this dance is in American Sign Language. So we have, I scream, once again, I scream, next section, you scream. Again, I scream, you scream like scream as in like you're almost like taking some picking something out of your mouth like this okay so again you have i scream you scream all right next part let's you're going to take make two l's okay and two l's are going to come out of your pockets let's dream okay 
let's dream. And you can use whichever hands you want, okay? So from the top, we have I scream, you scream, let's dream, let's dream, okay? Once again, six, seven, go. I scream, you scream, let's dream, let's dream. Okay, next section. This is the last section. We all scream for I scream. Again, we all scream for I scream. All right, we all scream for I scream. So from the top, we have I scream, you scream, let's dream, let's dream. We all scream for I scream. All right, let's do this one more time and let's have, let's put the spotlight on Mia, okay? Here we go. Five, six, seven, go. I scream, you scream, let's dream, let's dream. We all scream for I scream. All right, give yourself a round of applause. Okay, so that's just just a tiny piece of the dance. And if you want to learn the rest, you can go to the Flipgrid topic and learn the rest. But let's just watch a little bit of this ice cream wrap dance from the film. So go ahead, Chris. Let's just show the first 30 seconds. Dance. I scream, you scream, let's dream, let's dream. As we all scream for ice cream, my team, your team, we sing, we sing. Let us all do the right thing. I scream, you scream, let's dream, let's dream. As we all scream for ice cream, my team, your team, let's sing, let's sing. Let us all do the right thing. No matter who you are, dance doesn't discriminate. Everyone is different. Let's all celebrate. And even though we're different, Oh my gosh, that was the coolest. Marissa and Mia, thank you for teaching us the first part of that dance. I was dancing along and signing here. And remember, friends, you can get that entire video inside the Flipgrid topic, and it's the entire dance instruction. But Marissa and Mia, thank you for sharing that with us. Now, in just a moment, we're going to actually do a Q&A with questions from the audience. But before we do that, while you're getting your questions in, Marissa, Mia, it's time to take a selfie. And we love doing these because it's a chance for us to see all the folks out there tuning in. So friends, it's time to get ready for your selfie setup. And while you're doing that, I know Marissa and Mia are getting ready, but teachers, friends, lead learners, families tuning in, we would love for you to share these Flipgrids with these taught these selfies goodness gracious i've got flipgrid on my brain of course we would love for you to share these selfies with us on social media so if you're sharing on twitter be sure to tag marissa you can find her at marissa hamamoto and be sure to tag flipgrid too so on twitter that's marissa hamamoto h-a-m-a-m-o-t-o -A -A -O -O, and tag flipgrid and for those of you who are on insta definitely tag infinite flow dance on instagram we would love to see those selfies okay marissa mia get your big smiles ready because it's selfie time everybody you have about 30 seconds so say cheese smile looking good i love it everybody keep smiling we have a few more seconds So awesome. Hey, cheers, friends. Thanks, Marissa and Mia. Love seeing those smiles. Remember, tag Marissa Hamamoto and Flipgrid on Twitter and definitely tag Infinite Flow Dance on Instagram. So, Marissa, we have some questions for you. And I think we're going to start, Marissa and then Mia, the same question. We have a lot of students curious about how did you get your job? Marissa, do you want to take this first? Sure. So I am actually the founder of Infinite Flow. So I created Infinite Flow. And you no, know, dance has always been my passion. I've been dancing since I was six years old. So dancing was always my passion. Uh, but when I was in college, I had a stroke 
um, in my spinal cord, which temporarily paralyzed me from the neck down. So for a very short period in my life, I wasn't able to move my arms. I wasn't able to move my legs. I didn't feel anything uh, in my skin. Like when, when people touched me, I couldn't feel that. So there was a very short period of time where I was paralyzed from the neck down. And that eventually led me to infinite flow. But what's very beautiful about infinite flow is that this wasn't just about physical disabilities. This was really about showing that everyone can dance and that everyone is different and it's cool to be different. So this is why I created infinite flow and this is my job. <laughs> this is my full time job now, so I'm really lucky to be doing something I love to do. What about you, Mia? Well, I was, um, let's see, I grew up very, very athletic and I danced when I was a kid and I got paralyzed when I was 15, like I said in the video, and lo and behold, I never thought I'd be dancing professionally again after being paralyzed, but a few years later I moved to Los Angeles and I met some friends, including Marissa, who said, let's create a company where everybody can dance. And that was the first time I learned how to dance with a partner. So if you saw the video where I was dancing with Frank in the video, that was the first time that I learned how to dance with a partner and learned how to do all cool tricks. So now I feel like I've learned how to dance twice in my life. And this is part of my job. And then my other part of my job is graphic design. So I use a computer to design and do lots of different ads and flyers and fun stuff like that. That's awesome. We have a question from Ms. Murphy's class wondering how did you learn to dance in a wheelchair? That's a good question. Well, the first thing I learned about the wheelchair is that the wheelchair is just another way to move. So I remembered how to dance on my feet and on my legs and then I thought, oh, well, how would I do that? just in the wheelchair. So it's a called translation, right? That's something that we teach in Infinite Flow is translation, how to translate movement into your own body and how it makes sense for you. So for instance, when I was walking, I would do a turn of a pirouette on my feet. Now I'll do a turn like this. And I learned to do a wheelie so that I could do the turn faster. So I had to practice doing a wheelie and then I also practiced just doing movement in my wheelchair all different ways so that I got comfortable with my wheelchair enough to be able to dance in it. That's awesome. We have a couple questions from our good friends at Eaton School, fourth and fifth graders who are curious about all the different kinds of dances that are performed and how do you become an infinite flow dancer? Okay, so uh, so infinite flow, we actually started off as a ballroom dance company. And that's why, you know, if you remember in the first sizzle reel, you do see a lot of partner work. And so we love partnering because we feel like this is a great way to have a conversation without words because dance is a universal language. So we do a lot of ballroom, but we also do hip hop, contemporary. Uh, we are, you know, we do ASL dancing. We do all kinds of dance genres because at the end of the day, dance is dance, you know, and some of the dancing that we do, there probably isn't really a genre. It's just dancing. Um, we consider just literally like literally if you can feel the music and just groove to it we consider that dancing too so we're very broad now how to become an infinite flow dancer that's a little bit of a the, that's a long and that's a long answer but the long answer sure is you know we are a professional dance company so in terms of a, in terms of our professional dance company we we hold auditions uh, just like you have to apply for a job it's kind of the same thing with the company. However, that's not the only thing, only way to get involved with Infinite Flow. We do community events where anyone who wants to come and dance can dance. And that's and so so we have something for everyone. And I'm very grateful that we're able to actually do something online like this uh, too. So. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So we had a question that came in that said, what if I'm afraid to dance with somebody who has a disability? I'm afraid maybe I'll hurt them or be uncomfortable with it. What could you share about that? 
Okay, I'm going to go first. And I'm going to pass this to Mia next. So, you know, that's a really good question. And thank you so much for whoever asked that question for asking that question. So here's my story of how I how I founded Infinite Flow besides being a stroke survivor. So five years ago, I met a wheelchair athlete, a paraplegic athlete named Adelfo, and he had he is paralyzed from the waist down, very similarly to Mia. And I asked him to dance. And this was my first time ever dancing with someone with a physical disability. And honestly, I was scared too. I was really, really scared. I was scared to hurt him. I was scared that I didn't, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. So I was scared both like, you know, in so many different ways. But what was so interesting is after a couple hours of dancing with Adelfo, I realized that dancing with Adelpha was not much different from dancing with anyone else, that it was just society's perceptions that disability is not a cool thing and disability, like if you're disabled, you can't do something. It's that perception that got in the way. So that the question that you have about, you know, what if I'm scared to dance with someone with a disability, it's totally an honest, valid question, but I think my message here, the reason why we I built Infinite Flow is that um, there is like we're all human beings at the end of the day and we can all dance with each other. And even though we may look different, look different from each other, we're actually there's a lot more similarities between each other than not. Mia, how do you want to answer that question? Why don't you add to that? <laughs> I would also add that um, a lot of times it gets it seems a little bit scary that someone might have a disability, but just remember it's a person. Person first. When I was walking and this was before I was paralyzed, I was scared of disability because I didn't know it. I had no interaction with anyone with a disability. So when I got my disability, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm not going to have any more friends anymore because everybody's going to be scared. Scared to hang out with me, scared to dance with me, scared, scared to play with me. But when I went back to school, one of my friends said, well, she's the same just sitting down. Well, guess what? That's true because I'm the same person that I was before. So just remember that people with disabilities are people. And just like if you happen to get a disability, you're still going to be the same person. So think about the person first and then just dance. I know that the best way to get over any type of any type of fear is to just do it anyways. So just try it. Meet someone with a disability and ask them to dance and you'll see not so scary anymore. And that's yeah, that's a great transition. I was just going to ask. We had a comment that came in that said just like you, Mia, this person is in a wheelchair, but they're nervous to put themselves out there. So the question was, how can they become more brave? And I think you just did a beautiful job sharing that. Person first, what a powerful reminder to thank you, thank you. Um, I believe that we have time for one more question. And I know Mr. Merrill's class and Ms. May and Ms. Mailer's class have asked some really great questions. Is it hard to dance with wheelchairs and can people with canes dance? Do you make up your own dance moves? So maybe a last thought around these questions. So whether I, I think I think we're all you know, some of us are, I would say, born to be dancers. It's already there. But my belief here is that everybody has a dancer inside of themselves. And whether you have a disability or not, you know, a lot of us are scared to dance because it's a little bit stepping outside of our comfort zone. It's trying something new. It's like trying a new food that you've never tried before, right? Um, but, uh, you know, we as human beings, we are we've been dancing since the ancient times. You know, dancing was a way to, for example, ritual. Dancing was a way to connect with family, connect, connect with religion, connect with culture. Dancing has always been part of humanity. So and dancing is still part of our culture today. And again, I just want to also stress, you know, dancing is not always learning choreography and doing it. If you turn on the music, and just start grooving, this is dancing too. You know, I think what I'm doing right now, just talking with you all, we can call this a dance too. So the, the definition of dance is really broad. And I would say that um, 
you know, I would encourage everyone to just, you know, turn on the music and try dancing or maybe, you know, turn on a YouTube tutorial for dance and try dancing um, or go take a class. Uh, you know, there's so many ways to engage with dance, but just don't don't get caught up in thinking that dance has to be like the super fancy moves that you see on TV. <laughs> Mia, what about you? Yeah, and I would just love to add that if you use any type of assistive device for getting around like a cane or in my case, a wheelchair, you can use that in dance. It can be a prop. Think about the way that I'm allowed, I'm a, I am able to do wheelies. I wouldn't be able to do wheelies if I wasn't in a wheelchair. So think about all the possibilities that you could do with your assistive device and think about that as a prop instead of a hindrance. It's actually something that will open up your mind and become innovative. And at Infinite Flow, we have innovative days where we just try things. We just experiment, see what happens. And we dance with people of all different types of bodies using all different types of devices. So that makes it super fun and also extraordinary exciting because you can find things that you never thought you could do and then you realize hey i could do it so just have fun those are two incredibly inspirational messages and i love that the mission of what you're doing at infinite flow is to include empower and show everybody everybody has a dancer inside of them I have absolutely loved spending this time with you today. And friends, remember, you can use Infinite Flow's topics right away inside the Flipgrid Discovery Library. And remember, too, we'll be back for more Flipgrid Live events. You can head over to aka.ms slash Flipgrid Live Events to register. We're here every Wednesday at the same time. Don't forget to check out that topic. Remember, Infinite Flow has content live ready for you to use inside Discovery. And finally, educators, parents, families, friends who are listening in, if you want to learn how to get the most out of using Flipgrid with your community, feel free to sign up for a professional development session. I work alongside an awesome team of educators. Jornay, Feli, Jess and I are all here to help you. And you can find more information or sign up at aka.flipgrid slash uh, aka.ms slash Flipgrid PD, P as in pineapple, D as in dog. But we want to say thank you so much to Infinite Flow for sharing today. And thank you to all of you for tuning in. We hope you stay safe and take care. Bye.